John Danzer, you are, of course, performing a vital role in uh, raising awareness and persuading businesses that those who undertake reckless and secretive trading that puts their company's performance and reputation at risk puts all of us as citizens of the country at risk. But I just wonder if awareness raising is sufficient. Because if you look back at history, you can see a whole range of things that we could persuade businesses that is good practice, equal opportunities, health and safety at work, minimum wage, consumer rights. All of those are good practice in any business, but they all took legislation to make it work. Awareness raising was vital to get the legislation, but it wasn't enough on its own. And the good guys, the good companies, will have nothing to fear from good legislation to make sure they run their businesses properly. Richard, do you want to pick up on that? Um, I'm sympathetic to the point. My concern is that if the regulator starts to take ownership of the issues other than, as opposed to regulating the issues, then that there's a very thin dividing line. And the concern, my concern is that the management of the boards are then able to say, we've done it because the regulator told us to do so, rather than because this is part of our value set or our behavior set or whatever. And I think that, at the end of the day, is the critical area to make sure that our boards, our companies, remain founded on having the right value set, however you want to describe it, of this is what the business stands for, this is what we're going to do. Yes, we're happy with legislation. Yes, we're happy with regulation. But ultimately, we're going to do what we think is right within those constraints. Uh, again, I have sympathy with the point, but I, my, my personal view is that regulation is... Uh, often misplaced, has unintended, quest, uh, unintended consequences. Um, we may well end up with regulation because of where we're going at the moment. Um, but I would much prefer to see real professionalism. And I mean, you know, the board's absolutely being professional um, and the auditors being professional, everybody being professional as opposed to and, and, op and operating in the, con in the context of principles. I think that the, the examples that you quote in terms of, um, of regulation and legislation generally apply where there's a much wider interest to be covered than just the, the you know for the, what's in the what's in the best interest of the company itself was the you know social interest or the you know systemic risk or whatever it may have been. So things like health and safety and minimum wage and all the rest of it have been for, for, for other reasons other than what's in the best interest of the company. The message that we're trying to get across is that this is this is actually right for the company. This is right for the shareholders. It's right for the organisation itself. And it, it shouldn't be done. It, this is not yet another layer of compliance that we're looking to introduce. It's you know I think there is a lot of compliance already around risk, and we're saying that given that you have to comply anyway, why not turn that compliance into something that has real value in the company and has a bit of logic in terms of a linkage to what you're trying to do as a business? Good regulation tends to come through a good dialogue with the businesses that are being regulated um, and working out what form of regulation will be effective uh, that needs to go beyond what the businesses left for themselves might need to do. And on the other hand, that there's a fair amount of evidence that says if you over-regulate, you diminish the capacity of the business to make the judgments and build the kind of resilient cultures um, that the business has to do um, recognizing that there are inherent limits to regulation. Discuss, debate, um, let's bring in some other contributors.